Hello all and welcome back. If you're watching this video it's because you're wanting to convert a car to running hydrogen gas or just curious to know how. And it's actually surprisingly easy. Uh, if you've been following the channel then you'll know that we've been uh, working on a hydrogen powered car that was originally a petrol car and the aim was to do it as cheaply as possible just to see how cheap we can actually convert a petrol car to running hydrogen gas. Now that does have a few issues in regards to efficiency and how long the engine will last but it is doable um, so that's what this video today is all about is how I have converted the engine to run hydrogen gas and then maybe later on I'll do another video on the fuel tank in the boot so you can replicate this build exactly so uh, if you're new to the channel or just stopping by to watch this video and you like what you see please subscribe that lets me know that you're enjoying what you're seeing so let's jump straight into it so basically we got the car for uh, very cheap it's about uh, well, about 500 pounds and then the aim was to convert that to run on hydrogen gas uh, so the first thing i did was buy a ecu which controls the ignition timing so that i so i used a notice ecu from Motorsport Electronics and uh, that was very very easy to use. The, in total that cost about £350 and uh, it was very easy to wire in and that controls my ignition time and it replaces the standard ignition coils and you run a separate ignition coil for it or, or you remove the old ignition coil and you add a new ignition coil and that controls the, um, the, the spark for your ignition. And that's important when you're converting an engine to run hydrogen gas, as um, you need to retard the timing when running hydrogen. And if you don't do that, you will damage the engine very quickly. Uh, I've made lots of small engines in the past and kept the standard ignition timing, which on small engines tends to be something like 30 degrees, 32 degrees before top dead center. And uh, over time, you develop a lot of piston slap. Um, and just you, just you just do lots of nasty things inside the engine, which is just not worth it. Um, so yeah, you want to change the ignition timing. So I use a notice ignition ECU to do that, um, purely because it was the, the easiest way to do it. Now it's still not the best um, ECU for it because uh, notice ECU runs on a wasted spark system. That means you get a spark at top dead center or whenever you want the spark to occur. Um, and then you get an also, you also get a spark at bottom dead center, which is, which is not great. In fact, no, that's wrong. You get two sparks at the top dead center on the uh, ignition stroke and later on, on the exhaust stroke, which can cause backfire for hydrogen gas. So if you were to build this from scratch, or if I was to build this again, I would have a non-wasted spark system used. These do cost more money, um, but a lot of modern cars now use a non-wasted spark system. Uh, coil on plug, I believe it's called. Uh, so that's how I would go about it again if I was to do a build again. Um, but I'm happy with this setup I've got now, and I'll be running this for a while until I've so I've done what I needed to do, which, um, which I pretty much have done really. I mean, my whole aim when starting this channel was to build a hydrogen powered car and I've done that now. So I'll probably be moving on to other things. But before I do, I just want to share my knowledge so you can all recreate what I've done here and hopefully improve on that. So, so yeah, so we use a notice ignition ECU to control the ignition and that cost around 350 pounds. Um, I then had to change the spark, no, I had to change the spark plugs, yeah, I changed the spark plugs to colder running spark plugs. Um, the car did run uh, normally, really, on the standard spark plugs, but if you're taking it to a racetrack where you're really going to be putting your foot down accelerating hard, you really want to be using colder running spark plugs. So you just need to research your engine and find a spark plug that will fit, that operates at colder temperatures. Uh, this is important to, to reduce uh, pre-ignition in the engine uh, and that stopped backfires as well. So change the spark plugs, you've got uh, a piggyback ECU system. You're then also going to need um, injectors, bigger 
bigger injectors to flow more gas. So hydrogen gas is less dense, less fuel dense. I mean, it's a gas, so it would be less dense. So you need to put a lot of gas um, through the injector into the combustion chamber. So you could do two things. You could use a standard fuel injectors and have a really high pressure to, to get, get the flow of gas through it. Um, but that doesn't, well for me that didn't work because my regulator in the car maxes out at 10 bar uh, gas flow output at 10 bar. That's the max it can do. And I would need to go much higher than that if I was to use the standard injectors. So instead of going for higher pressure, I went for higher flow. And to do that, I use 440 cc fuel injectors from the Renault Clio Sport. So this is just a, a 1.1 litre petrol, but the Renault Clio also do a two litre version of this, this car. So I use performance injectors for that car. And then they plug straight into this, no problem. It was plug and play. They cost something like 40 pounds. So that was a nice cheap alternative. Now, the fuel injectors will eventually seize up. And that's because they're designed to run on petrol, not hydrogen gas. And hydrogen gas is non-lubricating. Petrol lubricates the uh, tiny solenoid valve, the little needle valve inside um, the injector as it flows through. Now, over time, the high flow injectors I've used have seized up. Every now and then, uh, I've lost two injectors, so I've had to replace them. Um, it did last a while, it's just not long compared to how they should last uh, for running it um, on petrol. So an alternative to this, if I was to do this build again, was to potentially use uh, LPG fuel injectors. Um, LPG gas is less lubricated than petrol. So in theory, they should also work absolutely fine on hydrogen gas. Uh, I've not tested it myself, so I don't know how it would actually perform. I don't know how you gauge flow rates when it comes to LPG injectors. I've always been a petrol head, so I just know a lot about petrol cars and that, that sort of thing, not, not so much LPG. So you'd have to do your research in that and testing, but if I was to do this build again, I would use LPG injectors, high flow LPG injectors, if that's, if that's even a thing, but I'm sure it is. So we've got new spark plugs, we've got the high flow injectors and the uh, notice ignition ECU to control the ignition timing. And the ignition timing is the most critical thing because you can still run a car to, on hydrogen gas with the standard spark plugs and you can still run it on the, um, without the fuel injectors, but you'll have to be using a higher pressure. The main change was the ECU. Now, um, I'm pretty sure that you could run a hydrogen car on the standard ECU I've never tried it myself, but I might be doing that in a later video. And I'm pretty sure you could, but it just won't last long because the, you'll start developing knock, and then you'll start developing piston slap, and then you would have you need to rebuild your engine because you've started damaging some critical components. So that's pretty much it in the engine bay. What you're seeing here is an additional thing that I wanted to do to fully embody, um, you know keeping the combustion engine alive. So the standard manifold would work on hydrogen gas. What you have to be wary of is if you do get a backfire when running on hydrogen gas in the air intake, you've got all this plastic air intake housing and that could shatter and explode. Um, I didn't like the idea of that. A um, bit similar to uh, the exhaust of the car. I've had the back box blown up on me because hydrogen gas built up inside the very restrictive exhaust and then I had pre-ignition or backfire um, which exploded all the mixed hydrogen oxygen in the exhaust and it couldn't escape so it just blew itself out the rear of the exhaust destroying the standard back box so it's got a um, an aftermarket back box on there now which is less restrictive so if it was to backfire it just shoots out like a cannon uh, except there's nothing flying out apart from, from steam I guess water, water molecules um, so this is the same but on the intake, so there's just runners, standard individual fossil body setup uh, and runners going into the cylinder head. Now if it was to get a backfire, it would just, the gas would just shoot out the top, nothing's damaged, nothing's exploded, 
absolutely fine. But if you had a proper engine setup, you wouldn't need these. Uh, or if you had a metal uh, intake manifold, which some cars do, then you wouldn't need them either. This was just me wanting the car to look pretty cool and to fully embody a, uh, a combustion engine. Uh, all, the, all the right noises it makes, uh, but producing zero carbon emissions, which is what it's all about at the end of the day. I mean, if you weren't so bothered about the combustion engine and you wanted something more efficient, you would 100% want to go down the hydrogen fuel cell route, which is basically an electric car, except it converts hydrogen gas into electricity and away you go. And you'll get hundreds of miles out of the fuel tank, whereas this, nah, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna refuel quite a lot because it drinks a lot of gas because hydrogen gas is not so dense. Um, so this is purely for fun at the end of the day or a racetrack or some sort of racing sport um, and you've got combustion engines running on hydrogen. So they sound like petrol engines, they run like petrol engines, but they produce zero carbon emissions. So these are actually from a uh, Kawasaki uh, motorbike. I believe it's it's ZX. I mean, I've got it written up there to remind me because uh, I'm not I'm not big into motorbikes, but I do like the um, I do like their engines. So it's a ZX six R Kawasaki motorbike. Uh, throttle bodies here, which cost about forty five pounds to buy. Uh, and then 3D printed some adapters and attached them onto the standard uh, engine manifold, um, intake manifold runners. I cut the, the top half of the manifold off, 3D printed some adapters and mounted these throttle bodies on top of there. And then we done some rewiring uh, for the throttle position sensor, the, the mass airflow sensor and for the throttle cable. So that's, that's all in there and it runs absolutely fine and it obviously it looks awesome. Um, we've also got because I've removed the uh, engine intake manifold, I've also got an oil catch cam. This is actually quite important because when you've converted an engine to run hydrogen gas, you will inevitably get quite a bit of blow-by, like you do past the piston rings, like you do with petrol engines, which will contaminate oil. Now, when it's, um, when it's petrol and mixed with the oil, it's not so bad. I mean, it's not ideal by any means, but it's not so bad. And that's why your oil over time gets a bit black. It picks up all the carbon deposits. Um, from the combustion chamber. That's why your oil goes black over time, especially in diesel engines. But when I'm running hydrogen, you know, it's water vapor. So in theory, your water won't go black. But if that water seeps past the piston rings, like it will inevitably do, it means you're getting oil contamination um, with your water contamination with your oil. And in fact, I was running this engine just earlier and you can see there, We've gone a bit murky, not ideal at all. This engine's due an oil change for that very reason. So by having, by having an oil catch can, which you can see over there, um, that becomes the highest point on the engine. So all the water vapor, the steam, the oil vapors will rise to the top here and get catched in the, and catched in the catch can. Help preserve the oil. But if you're converting an engine to run hydrogen and gas, you are going to want to do more oil changes anyway because you're inevitably going to get oil contamination with the water. So, recap, you've got standalone ECU, ignition ECU, you want new spark plugs, new fuel injectors, ideally LPG, but if not, high flow. Um, you don't have to have individual fossil bodies, but it's ideal. Oil catch can, ideal, because you're going to get oil contamination. And then finally, you want to change out your exhaust system. Now, hydrogen gas obviously creates water as its exhaust. So if you're running a standard exhaust system, which is usually steel on production cars, they will rust and they will rust very quickly because not only are you having lots of water vapor condensing inside the exhaust, you are also producing a lot of heat when burning hydrogen gas, much more heat than you would do on petrol. And because of that, your whole exhaust system will rust a lot quicker. So, it's, so basically you want to upgrade your exhaust system to stainless steel, which for car guys is a win-win anyway, because most of us have stainless steel exhausts on our cars. Um, because it sounds a hell of a lot better. And um, yeah, so you want a stainless steel exhaust. Ideally you want the exhaust to be straight piped as possible to remove any back pressure. Uh, like I learned the hard way, like I was saying earlier, I blew off my back box because the exhaust was so restricted and the worst case scenario happened where I had um, oxygen and hydrogen mixed in the exhaust, unburnt, and then it backfired and the whole thing, all that box exploded. So you want straight through exhaust ideally. 
Um, your catalytic converter you'd probably want to keep anyway um, because you're still producing NOx emissions when running hydrogen gas. This engine ran very, very lean, sorry, very, very rich on hydrogen gas, which means there's more fuel than there is oxygen so, and, uh, or air. And oxygen you find in air, but you also find nitrogen, and that's what creates um, your NOx emissions. So because I'm running a rich fuel mixture, there's less nitrogen in there anyway that's going to get burnt off. So um, catalytic converter maybe on my car is not needed so much, but if you wanted to go for the economy and the fuel efficiency and you wanted a very lean air fuel mix ratio, ratio <laughs> bit of a tongue twister there. But yeah, if you wanted a very lean mixture, then you probably want to have your catalytic converter to reduce NOx emissions. Uh, you won't have any carbon emissions if you've got a healthy engine and you're not getting any, any oil leakages. Um, so yeah, you want to keep, probably keep your catalytic converter. High flow car, again, because you don't want any back pressure. Now, if I was to also start an engine again from scratch, building a hydrogen powered car, I'd also want to have it turbocharged or supercharged. Ideally, uh, turbocharged. Uh, when running hydrogen, you have less torque than you would do on petrol. So it makes more sense to uh, use a turbocharger to recover the waste energy out of the exhaust instead of taking it straight from the crank like a supercharger would do, which is belt driven, um, which is going to rob some more torque. So I'd say turbocharged. Um, and that way you'll be able to get to your very lean air fuel mixtures, which should improve economy. And that's pretty much it. Spark plugs, fuel injectors, ECU, exhaust. Um, and in total, I probably spent on this car, hydrogen car conversion about £500 in parts. Uh, and that's not including the exhaust. So I, I probably want to upgrade the exhaust in the future. Apart from the back box, which is on there, but that was accidental. And that's pretty much it. So. If you like this video, uh, please subscribe. I'm going to be doing a, another video on the fuel tank and the fuel consumption and what you need to expect when you're sizing up your gas tank. Um, you need quite a big gas tank or quite a few small gas tanks. Um, so yeah, I'll touch on that in a future video. Hope this was helpful. Uh, hopefully you can take on what I've done and improve on it and make it better and um, share the knowledge. Um, so. Let's get hydrogen cars on the road. Thanks for watching.